All right, well, I'll say what I said uh, just a moment ago. Chairman Jordan and I have been very clear. We issued a lawful subpoena to the president's son. Uh, this has been a 10-month investigation, a credible, transparent investigation that has produced a lot of troubling evidence. We have lots of questions. Hopefully you all have had an opportunity to go in the committee room and see the boxes of documents that we've accumulated, tens of thousands of pages of documents. Uh, we have lots of specific questions. This is an investigation about public corruption at the highest levels of our government. The American people expect Congress to investigate this because I think one thing that Chairman Jordan's proven is uh, the FBI, the DOJ, and the IRS, as we've heard from the whistleblowers, have all dropped the ball. So the House Oversight and House Judiciary Committee are conducting this credible investigation that an overwhelming majority of Americans want. We have specific questions for the president's son. He does not get to dictate the terms of this subpoena. So with that, I'll turn over to Chairman Jordan. I would just point out that uh, I've had a chance now to review what uh, Hunter Biden said in his, his press conference. And I think he made an interesting statement. He said his father was not financially involved in the business. And I think that qualifier, the word financially, is, is important because, once again, it shows another change, another change change in this story. First it was no involvement, then no, I never never talked to anyone, and then we find out about the dinners, the meetings, the phone calls, and everything else. Now it's okay. He wasn't involved in the business financially. I think that is important. Uh, it's one of, the, one of the reasons we want to talk to Hunter Biden. Second thing I would say is this. In a few hours, I think the House of Representatives is going to pass the, the impeachment inquiry, and that is an important step if you talk to any scholars in this, I think we could proceed as we did under Speaker McCarthy where he announced it. But this is an important step. The impeachment power resides solely with the House of Representatives. If a majority of the House now says we're in an, an official impeachment inquiry as part of our constitutional duty to do oversight, that carries weight. That's going to help us get these witnesses in. And maybe most importantly regarding this morning's activities, this is the argument that the White House and Hunter Biden's counsel used to say he shouldn't come. Okay. We disagree. We thought he should have been here. But when we take that vote this afternoon, what's our argument going to be then? We think he should come in. And so and if he doesn't, we're going to we're going to move forward with uh, contempt proceedings. There's a process we have to follow, but we plan to do that. Had Hunter Biden come in today and answered three, four hours of questions, do you think some Republicans would have backed off on the inquiry tonight, possibly? Or were you guys hell bent going forward no matter what? Uh, no, they're not going to hold back because we've requested thousands of emails that they still will not turn over. Uh, we've requested transcribed interviews with certain White House staff that they've <clears throat> instructed not to come. So the White House continues to obstruct, and I think you're going to see a clear message from the House today uh, for the White House to cooperate with this investigation. Sure, sure, sure. <clears throat> What's the latest on that? She's coming. Yeah, she's coming. She's coming. Yeah, she's coming. We know. We definitely know. Definitely know. Come. There has to be a report filed. Uh, you know, we're we're scheduled to depart for the uh, for the Christmas break uh, tomorrow, but we will begin moving on that report with working with the lawyers on the oversight committee and uh, uh, lawyers uh, on, on judiciary committee and oversight committee to get that get that ready. But there's a process you have to go through, um, but we're, we will initiate that process. Are you, are you concerned if you uh, are able to pass a contempt resolution and then you refer that to the Biden Justice Department, how they might handle it? How do you think that process plays itself? Well, it's supposed to be equal treatment under the law. Um, you know, we know what they, what they, <laughs> you know, we, we know how aggressive they were with other individuals who've been held in contempt. We'll see what happens here. But um, all we can do is, you know, we can do our job and we're going to do that. Do you think it's something the special counsel should handle? Or? We're going to do our job. Actually, I did not. I, I respond. You can go look at the letters. I never said no to it. I just want to know how, how it was going to work and the process was going to work. Uh, and, and wrote them a letter, and they, they didn't do it. They didn't do a darn thing. So. But, Chairman Jordan, one thing I think Biden said this morning was Republicans have mocked his addiction. I'm not. Uh, what, uh, for Chairman Comer or Congressman what, what do you think of that idea that he's 
Hey, you, you guys are I'm not. mocking addiction. We, we've never mocked his addiction. Now, again, this is an investigation of Joe Biden. Hunter Biden's a key witness because we, we have a simple question, and the majority of Americans have a question. What did the Bidens do to receive tens of millions of dollars from our enemies around the world? That's a simple question. Every American wants to know. What did you do to receive the money? And we also want to know what role Joe played because, quite frankly, it's hard for me to believe, I'll speak for myself, that uh, all these oligarchs and the Chinese Communist Party were wiring Hunter Biden millions of dollars because they liked him because he added value to something. We believe, as what Devin Archer testified in the transcribed interview, that they were selling the brand and Joe Biden was the brand. And we believe that Joe Biden's known about this all along because he hasn't been honest with the American people. As, as Chairman Jordan said, his story continues to change. In the very beginning, when we launched this investigation, Joe Biden said he never met with any of these individuals. Now we know we met with all of these individuals. The narrative when we started this investigation was that no money ever transferred to the Bidens while Joe Biden was vice president. Now we know a huge percentage of the money transferred while Joe Biden was vice president. The majority of the shell companies were incorporated while Joe Biden was vice president. So we have a lot of questions about some very concerning transfers. That's why we have the, the thousands of pages of bank records. We've been very transparent with the media. This has been, I think, the most transparent uh, political or, or, or congressional investigation since, since I've been in Congress for seven years. We've produced four bank memorandums with specific bank statements. I mean, th this is a concern. This is about public corruption at the highest levels. And, you know, the president's son does not get to set the rules. I mean, he's had, he's had a pretty good run with the Department of Justice, with the IRS, and, and with, uh, with the FBI. But these two committees are going to hold firm. We have taken steps to go by the book in this investigation. Now we're in the phase where we do the depositions. And, you know, what he did today is unacceptable. Some Republicans I talked to in the committee say they do think the evidence is already there. They feel like they've seen enough to actually file articles of impeachment. But you two chairmen, do you feel like you've seen enough now? I've said, I've said all along I think the evidence is compelling. Uh, but we still need to talk to Mr. Schwerin, Mr. Walker, Mr. Bob Alinsky, Kevin Morris, Jim Biden, Hunter Biden. We need to talk to the two individuals who are part of Blue Star Strategies, uh, Kathy pa uh, Sally Painter and, and uh, uh, Ms. Tramontano. So those are people we need to talk to. We think with the vote this afternoon, we get those individuals in in a more timely fashion, and we get the documents we want. And I would still go back to this. One hour ago, I think the biggest takeaway was the statement from Mr. Biden where he said, my father was not financially involved in the business. That is a huge change, which means, sort of means he's involved. I think that's how anyone with common sense would read it. He's been involved, just not financially. That is a huge departure from everything they've said now for the last three and a half years. So as the chairman pointed out, the White House's story has changed multiple times. The Justice Department uh, story has changed multiple times on how they handle this investigation. But the story that hasn't changed, the testimony that has been consistent and stood up to cross-examination is the two whistleblowers. Their story has not changed, and frankly, it's been buttressed and reinforced by every. We've done eight different depositions of people involved in the investigation at the Justice Department, the Hunter Biden investigation, and none of them have refuted what those guys say. So over time, it just keeps changing from the White House. And this, this statement today, I think, is, is the biggest news of, of the morning, I, I guess, along with the fact that he didn't show up, which he's supposed to do. Mr. Thank Chairman, you all very much. we got to go. One, one Jim Biden. You have you guys heard it all from his representatives? Yeah, I've always talked to him. Yeah. You don't want to talk to anyone? Is anything scheduled on that front? We're working on it. After the vote tonight, thank